Hello viewers, I am Dr. Tamanna Siddiqui, working as associate professor in Department of Computer Science, Aligarh Muslim University, Aligarh. I will deliver a lecture on the topic database software concept and educational purpose under module 9 lecture series of online refresher course on ICT in teachers education. This lecture will give you an idea about database and the software that manage the database that is database management system. You will also learn how to create and use database through MS Access. I would like to give you some background about the topic before the invention of DBMS file processing system was in use to store information. In this system, data is stored in permanent system files that is on secondary storage. Different application programs are written to extract data from these files and to add record to these files. But the file processing system has the following major disadvantage. Number one, data redundancy and inconsistency. Since the data files and application programs are created by different programmers over a long period, the data files are likely to have different formats. Program may be written in several programming languages. Same information may be duplicated in several places. This results in data redundancy and inconsistency. The second problem of file processing system is difficulty in accessing the data. Conventional file processing system does not allow needed data to be retrieved in a convenient and efficient manner. Third problem of file processing system is data isolation. Because data are scattered in various files and files may be in different formats, it is difficult to write new application programs to retrieve the appropriate data. The fourth problem of file processing system is integrity problem. It means the data values stored in the database must satisfy certain types of consistency constraints. Application programmers enforce these consistency constraints by adding appropriate code in the various application programs. In file processing, it is difficult to change the program to enforce the new constraint. The fifth problem of file processing system is atomicity problem. In a conventional file processing system, it is difficult to ensure that once a failure has occurred and detected, then data will be stored to the consistent state that existed prior to the failure. The sixth one is the concurrent access anomalies. In file processing system, it is very difficult to handle concurrent access of data using program code. If multiple users are updating the same data simultaneously, it will result in inconsistent data state. The next problem is security problems. Not every user of the database system should be able to access all the data. Since application programs are added to the system in ad hoc manner, it is difficult to enforce such security constraints in file processing system. Database management system was introduced as a solution to resolve above mentioned issues. The first DBMS was introduced in 1960 by Charles W. known as IMS and it was developed in IBM lab. Now you can see here the picture of two approaches. You can see the comparison between the file processing and database approach. In diagram one, you can see that program one, data description one, program two, data description two, program three, data description three. They are written separately and they, they have been stored separately in file one, file two, and file three. In the second approach, in database approach, you can see here the application programs with data semantics, either uh, they can be different, application program 1, application program 2, application program 3, but they can store in one place and it can be shareable. Another comparison is in terms of hierarchy of data. In file processing system, the smallest storage is bits, collection of bits is byte, collection of byte is field, collection of field is record, and collection of records is file. In database approach, collection of bits uh, is byte, collection of byte is fields, collection of field is record, and collection of record is database that consists of files, metadata, indexes, application, met application metadata, they are elements of database. Now let me start the basic concept. Data, known facts that can be recorded. These concepts are very useful for the beginners. Database is a collection of related data organized in a way that can be easily accessed, managed, and updated. 
It represents some aspect of real world design, built, populated for a specific purpose. Database management system is software that allows creation, definition and manipulation of database allowing user to store, process and analyze data easily. Some DBMS examples include Microsoft Access, FileMaker, DBase, Clipper and FoxPro. Popular DBMS used these days are MySQL, Oracle, SQL Server, IBM DB2 and Amazon Simple Database. My next topic is benefits of database approach. Basically all the problems, all the issues of file processing system are resolved in database approach. So these are the benefits of database approach and these are number one, redundancy can be reduced, inconsistency can be avoided, data can be shared, standards can be enforced, security restrictions can be applied, integrity can be maintained, data independence can be provided, backup and recovery facility is also available in database approach. My next topic is DBMS interfaces. It means how the end user can interact with the software. Following are the DBMS interfaces. Number one, menu based interfaces for browsing, form based interfaces, graphical user interfaces, natural language interfaces, specialized interfaces, interfaces for the database administrator and query language. The, the next topic is type of database management system. Classification of database management system is according to the database models that they support. Here you should know what is data model. Data model can be defined as a collection of concepts that can be used to define the database structure. It means the data item, types, relationship, operation, behavior and constraint. It is a collection of tools for describing data, data relationship, data semantics, data constraints. There are four types of data models and they are as follows. The number one is hierarchical data model. In this model, data is stored in the form of a tree. The data is represented by parent-child relationship. Each tree contains a single root record and one or more subordinate records. It is one to many relationship between entities. The second model is network data model. Data is stored along with pointers which specify the relationship between entities. It is difficult to understand both the way data is stored and the way data is manipulated. It is capable of supporting many to many relationship between entities. The next model is relational data model. This stores data in the form of a table. Table is a collection of rows and columns where columns are considered as a fields and rows are considered as a records. The next model is object oriented data model. The information here is in the form of object as used in object oriented programming. It adds the database functionality to object oriented language. It requires less code, use more natural data and also code bases are easy to maintain. Examples of DBMS softwares are DB2, Oracle, Informix, Sybase, MS Access, Foxbase, Paradox, all are based on relational model. IMS DBMS, it is based on hierarchical model. IDS DBMS, it is based on network model. Object store version, it is based on object oriented model. Products from IBM Oracle object store version, it is based on object relational model. Now from here, I will give you the idea about how to create your own database. Before knowing this concept, you should know the concept of schemas and instances. A database schema can be defined as logical structure of the entire database. It defines how the data is organized and how the relationships among them are associated. It formulates all the constraints that are to be applied on the data. A database schema defines its entities and the relationship among them. It contains a descriptive detail of the database which can be depicted by means of schema diagrams. It is designed when the database does not exist at all. Once the database is operational, it is very difficult to make any change to it. A database schema does not contain any data or information. It is similar to type information of a variable in a program. Database instance, the actual content of the database at a particular point in time. 
A database instance is a state of operational database with data at given time. It contains a snapshot of the database. Database instance tends to change with time. A DBMS ensures that its every instance is in a valid state and it is similar to value of the variable. Now in the diagram you can see the example of university database. In the first portion you can see there are different schema constructs, student, course, section, grade report, prerequisite. Collection of these schema constructs collectively known as database schema. In the second part of the diagram you can see a schema with data and this is a database instances. Now the next topic is database language. A DBMS has appropriate language, languages and interfaces to express database queries and updates. Database languages can be used to read, store and update the data in the database. A structured query language is supporting language of DBMS software. It is database query language used for storing, retrieving and managing data in relational DBMS. SQL was the first commercial language introduced for EF Quartz relational data model of database. Today, almost all RDBMS like MS, uh, MS, uh, MySQL, Oracle, Informix, Sybase, MS Access use SQL as the standard query language. SQL is used to perform all types of data operations in RDBMS. It, is main, it mainly consists of four types of commands. Number one, data definition language, DDL commands. It is used to define database structure or pattern. It is used to store the information and create a schema, tables, indexes, constraints, etc. in the database. Here are some commands that come under DDL. Create. It is used to create table in the database. Alter. It is used to alter the structure of the database. Drop. It is used to delete objects from the database. Truncate. It is used to remove all records from the table. Rename, it is used to rename a table. The second category of SQL command is data manipulation language. It is used for accessing and manipulating data in a database. It handles user request. Here are some commands that come under DML. Select, it is used to retrieve data from a database. Insert, it is used to insert data in a table. Update, it is used to update existing data within a table and delete, it is used to delete all records from the table. The third category of command is data control language, DCL commands. These commands are related to access control, certain permissions can be given or cancelled with the help of these commands. These commands are used by database administrator. Two commands are mainly used, number one is grant, it is used to give user access privileges to, the data, to a database and the revoke, it is used to make, take back permissions from the user. The fourth category of command is transaction control language. Transaction control language commands are used to manage transactions in the database. These are used to manage the changes made to the data in a table by DML statements. It also allows statements to be grouped together into a logical transaction. Commit and rollback are the commands that comes under this category. Commit is used to save the transactions on the database and rollback is used to restore the database to original since the last commit state. The next concept which is useful for designing a database is concept of keys in database. Key is a minimal set of columns used to uniquely define any row in a table. In database terminology, there are several types of keys as summarized below primary key, an attribute whose value is unique across all occurrences of a relation. An attribute or a set of attribute is said to be primary key if it satisfies following properties. It should be unique, it should be not null, it should be minimal. The second type of key is candidate key. It has same property as primary key. Relation schema may have more than one candidate keys. Primary key of the relation designated among candidate keys other candidate keys are designated as secondary keys. The last one is the foreign key. In the relational database, tables are related to each other through a common column. A column in a table that references a column in another table is known as foreign key. Some important issues are 
The attributes in foreign key have the same domain as the domain of primary key attributes. Foreign key can be defined as an attribute or a set of attributes that appears as a non-primary key attribute in one relation and as a primary key attribute in another relation. These are the example you can see. There are two tables, employee table and department table. Now here you can see the department number is the primary key of department table and it is used as foreign key in employee table. Now here I will give you the idea about uh, the activity uh, of uh, database creation using MS Access. In the first step, you will create the table. To create the table, the, first of all, you will create a database from a template. You first need to open MS Access, then press on create, then press on table design. You will see this window. Now here, you can insert number of columns here in the next. Insert column names that you want in the table. Now, you, any number of columns as per your requirements, you can insert it here. And descriptions of those columns can also be stored here. Select the columns that you want to set as a primary key. Just select the column and press the right key of the mouse and select the primary key option. After creating all the columns, click on the save as. You will see the new window for the table name. Here you will give the table name. After that, fill all the details of a student in the corresponding field and click on the save key. If you want to create another table, then create another table by using the same steps. And if you want to establish the relationship between these two tables, then click on the database tools, then click on the relationship, then select the table, then pick the column name from the first table and drop the second table on the same column, the relationship will be established. Now the next option is if you want to insert or delete any record, it will be possible. Select the row where you want to insert a new row and press the mouse right key. You will see the dialog box. You will see the new record. Click on the new record and you will be able to insert a new record here. Similarly, if you want to delete a particular record, select the row that you want to delete and press the mouse right key, you will see the dialog box delete record. Select this option, that particular record will be deleted. The next option is you want to create query. For query design, you click on the create query wizard, then simple query wizard, then press on the OK. Select all fields and click on the next, then next modify the query design and click on the finish. You want to check all those students whose name starts with letter A. This is an example, if you want to write this kind of query, you write A asterisk in criteria row and the S name columns, after that press tab key. Now on the bottom side, you can define your conditions and then you can save the query. For executing the query, click on the design key, then run key. After executing query, you will get the result. You, if you want to see the query, click on the view, SQL view. In this window, you can see the SQL view of, the, of your query. You can also modify, modify your query here and you can see the different result. Now, the next, next topic is the database application. Actually, a database is used in all aspect of real world. For example, in university, registration system, grading system, in banking, in transaction system, in sales department, customer, products, purchases, everywhere database is applicable, in airline, reservation and schedules, online retailers, order tracking, customized recommendations, in human resource department, employee records, salaries record, tax deduction, in manufacturing department, production, inventory, order, supply chain, everywhere database is applicable. Now the next topic is advantages and disadvantages of DBMS. First of all, see the advantages. The first advantage is isolation of application program, minimal data redundancy, easy retrieval of data using the query language, reduced development time and maintenance need, faultless integration into the application programming languages which makes it easy to add database to almost any application or website, 
With data cloud data centers, we now have database management system capable of storing almost infinite data. In the same way, DBMS also has some disadvantages. The first one is its complexity. Number two is except MySQL which is open source, licensed DBMS are very costly, are generally costly. Except MySQL which is open source, licensed DBMS are generally costly, they are large in size. The last topic is DBMS in education sector. Database systems are likely to be introduced in schools and colleges to store and get access to the data of a student, staff details, course, exam, attendance and fee details, payroll data, etc. Software packages like campus management system, college management system, learning management system, EDU smart, these are the example of application of DBMS in education sector. Another module is in admission and registration process database is applicable like collection, collect online applications from the admission, create automated sequential admission numbers and application form according to your choice as well as generate the admit card and manage whole admission process, evaluate candidates eligibility criteria for admission, option to schedule entrance examination for the student. For a student database is very useful like share and communicate data information with student and teachers, student login and access lesson plans, assignment, grades, activities, etc. Take part in school forums and discussions online. And the last one is utility and preferences, generate and maintain the list of user groups, set permissions for the users to access a specific modules, forms, data reports, etc. These are some references. If you have any query, I have given my email ID, you can send email to me, I will be happy to answer. Thank you.